Will Beverly, 360,000 Israeli reservists, army reservists, have been called up. To put that into perspective, when Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, he amassed about 100,000 Russian troops along the border, and, and the world thought that was a huge military build-up. So this is 360,000 on top of the regular army circling or, or around this very small parcel of land which has 2.3 million people crowded into it. So things look ominous. We heard in that Nick Dole report that entire families have been killed here in Israel by Hamas. We're hearing the same thing now out of Gaza. Entire families are being killed with the bombings that uh, Israel's partaking in. Entire neighbourhoods, two neighbourhoods overnight in Gaza were completely wiped out. So it's a very grim situation in, and, and the Gazans now, no food, no water, no medicines going in So because Israel has to give approval and they've decided to stop all of that. So it's a very grim situation. Yes, and power we expect to go off within the next hours. That blockade is only going to intensify. At stake, though, John, are the lives of possibly over 100 hostages. There are appeals from the families, many of them dual nationals, including an Australian woman, to exercise caution. Uh, do you think uh, the Israeli government has cause for caution at this point? Well, Beverly, it surely would be reasonable for a humanitarian corridor and for all civilians captured to be released. Um, obviously, that would be, you know, a, a good gesture um, from the side of Gaza to release those. We think there could be as many as 150 Israeli hostages, both army, some of them are soldiers, and many civilians and children. Um, and that the, the old woman, we've seen the picture of her with the gun that they gave to her for a photograph. So it would be great if those were released and a humanitarian corridor. When they turn off power, it's going to mean those people in the hospitals in Gaza, the children, the sick children and the elderly people will probably die as well. And they're getting no medicines in there. So hopefully there could be some sort of uh, way of releasing, having some of those very sick people and the hostages to be released. Yeah. It seems too, John, that the true horror of the attacks is now becoming evident as the days pass, the stories that we are hearing, people are now burying their dead. Um, how are people absorbing the impact of these lives lost? How their lives have possibly changed well, forever? Well, Beverly, it's the, the, the trauma and the anger and pain here in Israel is quite demonstrable. Um, in fact, overnight, there were at the Mount Herzl military cemetery here in Jerusalem, there were 10 funerals of soldiers back to back. That they were burying them until one o'clock this morning. Um, in fact, um, I've just heard reports that they're asking for volunteer grave diggers because the, the current staff of grave diggers at the cemeteries here just can't keep up with it. So you can imagine, you know, the effect that's having and, and the trauma that's causing. And there's also, of course, while there's a lot of anger here, there's also people who are starting to say things that probably wouldn't normally be said. For example, a Likud member of the Knesset, uh, Tali Gottlieb, has um, posted on social media essentially urging a, a nuclear strike on Gaza. Um, she, she calls it the Jericho missile, which is the phrase that some people in Israel refer to jokingly for a nuclear weapon, the Jericho missile, as in the town of Jericho down there in the West Bank. Um, now, of course, nobody wants that, but she's a member of the ruling party, and the fact that she feels that she can say that sort of thing indicates the sort of climate that we're in now. Yeah. Hezbollah, too, has claimed responsibility for several rockets fired into Israel. They say a number of lives were lost. This is another very delicate situation for Israel to juggle. Yes. In fact, as we spoke about last night, Beverly, this is the very thing that nobody in the region, or certainly anybody who wants any stability in the region, doesn't want. Hezbollah, of course, is, is a proxy of Iran. Um, they have up to 100,000 or so missiles um, south of the, of the Latani River in southern Lebanon. Not that far from here, actually. It's a very small place. People often don't realise just how physically small 
not just Gaza is, but, but Israel itself is small and it has Lebanon not far away. It's, it's a very ominous sign that that northern border is starting to... There's more tension, there's, there's soldiers being injured and killed on the Israeli side. So it'll be interesting. I think this Friday will be a very... Um, volatile day here. Friday, of course, is the day of prayers in the Islamic and Muslim world, midday. And down there in the old city behind me, um, I've often covered many conflicts on a Friday. Um, and this Friday, I think, at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is just down there um, in the old city near the, the Golden Dome there, I think that this Friday could be very volatile. I think after those prayers, um, in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, which is just down here in front of me, and uh, in you know around the, um, Gaza as well, I think we can see more volatility.